Well, buckle up. What we're getting here in this breaking news is one, Mueller indicting a very senior, longtime uh, associate of Donald Trump for things he tried to do relating to collusion. And number two, that person, Roger Stone, saying he's going to fight it. So that would begin right now, today. You don't wait to fight something like this. That's going to be in court uh, with, obviously, the legal process. Everyone understands that. We were just covering that. Okay, not guilty. Then it comes out to the rest, which is how does he align himself with people that are friendly to Trump, with Trump allies? How does he position himself uh, as some sort of way to be a bulwark against the Mueller probe? Uh, appealing to the so-called witch hunt crowd. And what does he do? We don't know. What does he do if he wants to come out and address the public? Um, as chief legal correspondent, I want to I want to be clear about where we're going. There's room for analysis and plenty of room for criticism because Mueller's laying out all kinds of stuff that a lot of Americans think is abhorrent uh, for anyone to do in the political process. But I want to be clear about what we know and don't know, Craig, uh, especially for viewers who are joining us. Uh, with regard to the very tantalizing allegation in here uh, that was just mentioned, paragraph 12, what page is that? Uh, page 4, paragraph 12. A senior Trump campaign official directed to contact Stone about any additional releases and what other damaging information Organization One, believed to be WikiLeaks, had about the Clinton campaign. That's a big deal because Mueller is telling you that Stone was not just some sort of rogue, um, but that they were reaching out to Stone and that it came from a higher place. As for who that official is, Mueller is not naming that person, which means this is the federal government through the special counsel's office telling us Trump campaign, but not telling us who. Now, because we have this language after July 22nd release, that could mean the day after, it could mean longer after. But I would note Steve Bannon didn't join the campaign until much later, about a month, August 19th. So who that person is, if they were employed by the campaign at that time and the exact timing of that, right. is not stated by Mueller. That's important. Uh, number two, I think what you have to look at here is uh, we're looking at Roger Stone as a mystery figure. Uh, in fairness to the Trump campaign, they would say Donald Trump washed his hands of using Roger Stone as an official campaign employee long before any of these charged crimes. So that's important in fairness to them. On the flip side, anyone who's been around Donald Trump or politics knows you don't have to be on his payroll. Heck, he doesn't pay a lot of people anyway. So the larger point here that is, that is potentially a blockbuster is the idea hinted at that Roger Stone off the payroll, off the books, was essentially doing these things for the Trump campaign. Person one and person two um, in this indictment, again, not named, um, but, but do we think we know who they are? We do. Uh, and this is standard practice. This is not just a Mueller thing. This is in any indictment. If someone is not being charged, they are not referred to by name generally to protect them because you're not supposed to infer negative things. Um, but obviously, when you refer to people like a president or a CEO, it's pretty clear who they would be. In this key new stone indictment, you have person one identified as a basically a media figure on the on the right wing connected to Stone and then the later emails match with things we've obtained here in our newsroom that make it look to be Jerome Corsi who as you and I were discussing earlier I interviewed earlier this week uh, among other Mueller witnesses person two is identified as a radio host uh, basically that could have been his intermediary to WikiLeaks well both Stone and Randy Credico have publicly spoken about that, so we believe that to be Randy Credico. Uh, I've interviewed him on the beat. In fact, some of the witness tampering alleged here of Stone yeah. v. potentially Credico uh, was something that Randy Credico first discussed on MSNBC on the beat during that time. And again, some of this gets weird or baroque, but it is what it is. It's now a charged crime. A Stone allegedly threatening to harm Mr. Credico's dog if he didn't go along with what he wanted, threatening him that he would end up in jail, threatening uh, other types of intimidation and attacks. Craig, we've been talking for weeks about what, what it means when you attack someone uh, and their family yeah. or, or, or try to intimidate them. Bob Mueller today is saying he will charge witness tamper. Have you talked to Corsi since uh, news broke about this indictment and arrest? Um, now, I feel like I'm being interviewed. <laughs> I feel this feels like a deposition. The last time I spoke to Mr. Corsi uh, was late last night. We okay. spoke about Roger Stone. We spoke about whether this would happen, but it was before this happened. Uh, I, I want to give the control room just a heads up here. I'm not even sure we have this, uh, but we, we, we have been doing a pretty good job of keeping track uh, graphically um, of the folks who have been indicted so far, who folks who have been charged uh, by Bob Mueller. Look at that. Somebody is quick on the on the switch there. Dom, way to go. These are the this is the Trump team uh, so far. These are the criminal records so far. 
um, in no particular order. George Papadopoulos, former campaign advisor, charged with lying to the FBI about conversations with people he believed were working on behalf of Russians. Sam Patton, charged with failing to register to work as an agent of a foreign power. Paul Manafort, and oh, by the way, Mr. Manafort, also in a courtroom uh, today as well. Manafort, charged, of course, with tax and bank fraud, false statements, being an unregistered agent of a foreign principal, charged with obstruction of justice as well. Uh, it would seem as if Mr. Manafort is going to spend the better part of at least a decade in a federal prison. Uh, Michael Cohen, of course, tax evasion, bank fraud, campaign finance violations. Uh, Alex Vanderswan, charged with lying to investigators about conversations with Mr. Gates. Uh, Rick Gates, financial fraud, lying to the FBI. Uh, Michael Flynn, General Flynn, charged with lying to the FBI about conversations with, with the Russian ambassador. Uh, 13 Russian nationals, three related companies as well, charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, and identity theft as well. Um, 12 Russian intelligence officers. I think we've gotten everyone. Are you, you look at, at those two full screens there, some of those folks you probably have forgotten um, about. And the president continues to insist, no collusion, uh, that this is all a witch hunt. But you look at those, those two full screens, and it would not necessarily seem to be much of a witch hunt at all. And if it is a witch hunt, um, the special counsel's office has managed to ensnare lots of witches. That's right. Uh, we've never seen anything like this before. Uh, some of these individuals are legally still presumed innocent, including Mr. Stone, indicted today. But when you take it together, as, as you just broke it down as a matter of reporting, Craig, the noose is tightening around the Trump campaign. The noose is tightening around the Trump campaign, its activities, its, uh, according to this evidence, its attempts to get inside information, and according to one email from Mr. Stone, to direct the type of material information it wanted to get from WikiLeaks, which is, according to Mueller, alleged to be originally from Russia. So that's a big deal. That doesn't tell you, as I mentioned, whether Mr. Stone will ultimately remain presumed innocent or be found guilty. It doesn't tell you how many people were involved. And it tells you, and I want to be very fair and clear about this, yeah. it tells you zero about the asserted evidence of the legal knowledge of then-candidate Trump, later President Trump. So it is possible legally that all of this went down, a conspiracy or attempted collusion involving all those people, including non-related, uh, unrelated crimes of collusion, as you mentioned, and that and the candidate didn't know, didn't direct. That's possible. And, and we have to, according to the rule of law, be prepared for what the evidence shows. But the noose is tightening, I say, around the campaign, um, because Roger is not nobody. Uh, and everyone who covers this understands that. Roger is a big fish. And Mueller is putting down for the first time a piece of the type of attempted conspiracy you would get involved in the campaign, because who directs a senior campaign official? Somebody else senior or above. So you're getting to a noose around a small number of people in the campaign. Now, it may not be the candidate. Uh, and, and again, let's be fair. There are a lot of people in this country who are very skeptical of the things Donald Trump says. Because, Craig, why? Because he lies constantly. But we've all covered campaigns where the candidate is out of the loop on all sorts of big things. Uh, and Donald Trump was not super experienced. So you can make that case. That's clearly where Rudy Giuliani has been going. It's not nothing bad happened. It's, right. it's uh, my guy didn't know about anything bad that happened. And maybe the bad things aren't crimes. Well, sir, a lot of them have already been confessed crimes. So that's not a debate. But I think what we're seeing today here, and when the history of the Mueller probe is written, Craig, today will be one of its biggest days. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.